The Jonski is a YouTube channel run by and run for people over the age of 13. People under the age of 13 should click off of this video right now or watch with a parent or guardian. Viewer discretion is advised. You don't scare me! <laughs> Militus freaking today, militiamen. My name is King Prime, and welcome back to another video here on the YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at something that I said in a previous review that we're going to be taking a look at. This is the brand new, and I do mean brand new this time, Star Wars The Vintage Collection Mandalorian Super Commando. Now, I have a lot to say about this figure. It is, even though it's mostly borrowed from different parts from other Mandalorian figures, this is quite a good example of what Hasbro can do if they put their minds to a figure. If they put every resource they have available to a figure, this is the result. It's on the same tier, not quite as good, but on the same tier as the Vintage Collection Obi-Wan Kenobi Darth Vader. This is truly excellent. Real quick, but though, before we get into the review, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. Like I, like I said in the 501st review, I have a carded example because I have a few of these figures. Uh, I am an army builder, unfortunately. <laughs> we have on the front here a nice shot of the Mandalorian Super Commando from either Season 4 or it's from the finale and Season 7 of the Clone Wars. This is just taken right off and given a sort of light blue, teal, cyan-ish hue to it to go with this kind of greenish backing that they've put on the name for the Mandalorian Super Commando. You have the nice red Clone Wars trades up here, as well as the Kenner trades and some legal jargon. <clears throat> Excuse me, some legal jargon on the back. On the very back of the card, you have some figures in line. We have uh, Boba Fett, who I don't. I mean, I have a version of him, Reva. I have Kenobi or Anakin, I don't care to get. The Super Commando, which I obviously obviously have. The Darth Vader figure, which, I mean, you heard my opinions on it. The uh, Morak Din Djarin, which I do not have quite yet, but I do have pre-ordered. And the 332nd uh, Clone Trooper, which I will be getting several. <laughs> uh, other than that, though, like I say in every single one of these reviews, these are pretty just... Standard uh, Kenner card backs, which we see on basically every vintage collection figure by now. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. The only people who are really interested in this stuff is the sealed collector community. I am not one of those people. I don't collect sealed, I collect open. And for that reason, I'm going to hit you with a freeze frame. <music> freeze frame, unfreeze. Okay. So what can I first say about this figure? Let me just strip him of his weapons real quick, become the ATF, and show you exactly what he's made of. At the very first thing you see about this figure is that there's a lot of really nice scarring on his armor, kind of like how there was on the 501st clone with the white chipping underneath. Now you have the silver chipping through the red armor. You also have some either uh, war paint on his helmet or some scorch marks. I can't actually tell which. It's probably war paint, knowing Maul. But this figure does look phenomenal it does look like it's been through a war something about the gray undersuit uh, hat makes it feel just dirty same thing with the gauntlets that are used are these whistling birds they might be flamethrower no they're whistling birds and then the other gauntlet here the shade of gunmetal makes it really look battered up especially with this nice paint detail here that are chipping or scorch marks or, or, or wear and tear the brown for the uh, leather pieces on the belt, as well as the crotch piece, which is supposed to be metal all torn up, makes this really look war-torn, and I really dig this aesthetic of figure. I think it looks fantastic, and it's really well done. Uh, you have the removable jetpack back here. This is just standard piece of plastic, doesn't have a removable rocket, unfortunately, and it attaches in with that uh, half-circle type uh, hook, as well as there's some sculpted detail of a latching on point there and some more nice silver details overall it looks really nice this figure comes with some weapons here it has two west star pistols which i'm not gonna lie to you my biggest gripe with this figure is actually how these pistols don't really fit into the holsters because of the way they're sculpted uh, they're sculpted out of very very soft plastic and it's really annoying to get them in the holsters like this one i'm i am pushing on it you can see the pistol bend and it just will not go. So you just you just can't get this one in. Uh, the same thing goes for the West. I think this is a West Star Blaster Rifle. I'm not sure. I'm not that fluent on Mandalorian weapons from the Clone Wars. 
But my biggest gripe with this weapon is because of the same soft plastic that they used to make it, it does not like to stay in his hand. It just wiggles and wiggles and wiggles. You can get a one-handed grip on it and it looks like just a big iron, but then the second you try to get him a two-handed grip on this, because like I said, it is a rifle, the second you try to get a two-handed grip on it, it will just come right out of his hand. Like you saw it there. And that's really annoying. I do not like that. I, I think that they could do better. Like I said in the last review, which was the 501st Clone Trooper, the weapons are made out of a much higher quality plastic, not super soft. This is super soft and therefore kind of crap. So I, I'm not a big fan of those, those two weapons. But while we're here zoomed in on this figure, let me take a quick look at the articulation. So at the head, we have a nice dumbbell joint, which I will show you momentarily if I can decapitate him. You have it, you can see it right in there, the helmet. So yeah. So you can get some nice action, and he is really well. You have a outward hinge at the elbow, as well as a sort of limited, but not that limited because of the way the uh, soft plastic shoulder piece is molded. Sort of limited, but not really limited shoulder joint. You have a pretty good bend at the elbow as well as an elbow swivel. Uh, it's just kind of limited by the way the, the actual undersuit is sculpted around the uh, bicep. You have a downward hinge joint at both hands, even though this one's kind of stiff. It is there, so it can go up and down, and you have it on, on both hands. This one isn't a different hinge. This is also a up and down. At the hip, or at the waist, you have a nice ab crunch, as well as a swivel at the hips. For the actual hips, though, you have the very nice new, and mind the angle here, very nice new hip joints that are on ball joints, even though they're a little hindered by the way the armor on his thighs work. Have a nice thigh, upper thigh cut, as well as a hinge at the knee, which is just kind of, it's kind of mid, but it's not that bad. And a hinge at the ankle, as well as a nice ankle pivot. So pretty good articulation, pretty standard for what we've come to expect on these newer figures, but this is really good, and the way this the figure looks, this army builder figure, which you can get multiples of, looks, is fantastic. Although, I'm not going to lie, the best reason to get this figure is just to make a Season 4 Kenobi, which I will have a picture of right there, I just kitbashed it with the uh, Obi-Wan figure, just swap out the heads and boom, you got that thing, and it looks awesome. But real quick, let me pause this up let me do a freeze frame real quick and get you in for a size comparison so freeze frame freeze frame on freeze let me get zoomed out a little bit there so here we have the super commando and next to him we will put the 501st clone trooper as seen in season seven of the clone wars and in revenge of the sith if i can get him to stand straight there we go we have his boss, Darth Maul, who will stand there. He's kind of in the uh, throne room pose, though, so just give him a little bit of a credit. He's kind of got his legs splayed right now. He's taller than uh, the Super Commander, though, or, or around a similar height. We will also bring in... Let me see real quick. We'll bring in Bo-Katan, who is an adversary of this figure. And why not? We will bring in... Ahsoka Tano, who is another adversary of this figure. I'll stick her next to Maul. Uh, okay, and is she going to stand? Please stand, Ahsoka. Yes, okay. So that's how they all look together. Not bad whatsoever. Now, the Super Commando at the helmet is a little bit shorter than the 501st clone, but if you remove the 501st clone's helmet, the Super Commando would be the tallest of the bunch. He does look fantastic, though, in this kind of Season 7 inspired posing real quick and i think it looks great so let me do another freeze frame real quick and get my final thoughts on the figure so freeze frame hi boys i have a question for the men what the fuck do you want what is it freeze frame unfreeze now this figure is really good it is a very awesome army builder and a very solid standalone figure it 
does very good on the departments of accessories, which it comes with three, even though the accessories, I'm not going to lie, are kind of garbage. I will not be using this ever again. Mm -hmm. Paint, detailing, and articulation. It is everything you could want except for a solid figure when it comes to storing of said weapons that it comes with or the accessories that it comes with it's just kind of not the greatest at that however that doesn't stop it from being really good i think this figure is fantastic and i think that you should absolutely pick it up if you are a fan of the clone wars or season seven or mandalorians or maul deloreans or any delorean that you like including the one from back to the future my friends, that's going to be it for the video. If you like the Super Commandos or Maul in general or bad guys, Mandalorians, whatever have you, please make sure you share this video with your Facebook groups, with your friends, with anyone you like or don't like. If you Hell, if you hate me and you hate these guys, make sure you send this video to, to the people that you hate so that they can get pissed off at you or that you can get sweet revenge. Either or. I, I think that, that that's a... Uh, a very good, a fair trade, a fair trade. Also, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff down below. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, my friends, peace.